In this video, I want to discuss one of the most underrated RFCs and protocols that have been most of the time ignored by proxies and backends. And it has a lot of huge impact on the backend performance. That's why I want to shed light on this technology, shed light on this RFC. Hopefully, a lot of proxies will pick it up and implement it. And uh, we've seen, we are seeing more need for this technology. And that is the RFC that's called 8441. Let's jump into it. That little puppy. I talked about it in another video, but I didn't give it its um, justice. This is called bootstrapping WebSockets with HTTP2. But this is one implementation for that. The power of this protocol is in this thing. It's called extended connect method and i'm gonna demystify this with pretty diagrams in a minute but this is the most powerful thing here guys the connect method as we know and i talked about it right here if you want to learn more about it is an http method that allows us to hook a back-end tcp connection to a front-end client so that i can transfer pretty much anything it's a, it's a tunnel essentially uh, another term for this it should be tunneling it comes with limitations when when there is web sockets involved when, when you want to scale imagine you have two or three clients and those three clients will connect to your proxy and those three clients immediately will get three dedicated connection one to one right almost one to one that's layer four proxying we talked about that many times in this channel that's cool because it quickly allows me to I can I can basically build my own protocol and the proxy can be blind effectively doesn't have to know this stuff and I can just tunnel stuff however it's wasteful what if I have 2000 3000 4000 web sockets 10000 a million client that does not scale on the back end that's a waste because we know we can multiplex multiplexing is a is a gift and that what extended connect method gives us with http2 which is the multiplexing protocol and future quick and http3 that allows us to take a lot of clients and then beautiful one connection multiplex all this request into a single connection giving us efficiency giving us performance giving us resource efficiency essentially yeah we're, we're efficient on the back end we want to be efficient let's just jump into the slides that i created so i can explain this thing all right so the rfc is called rfc 8441 extended connect or bootstrapping web sockets with http2 but essentially it can be literally anything it doesn't have to be web socket the cool thing is about how can we augment the connect method which is very dumb today it just literally established the tcp connection on the back end and have it have more knowledge more stuff so we can it can we can tell the back end more information about what we need not just a tcp connection right there is a lot of going on there here extended connection i want to talk about mask the new protocol that pretty much obsoletes the whole thing maybe that's the weight that is going on but let's let's leave it into another video mask here i have a lot of clients and this is my proxy and this is my server okay this is a tcp connection essentially it's an http 1.1 connection or it could be http 2. there's another client connecting to my proxy another client connecting to my proxy and what i want to know what need is i want to let's assume this is websocket to implement websocket correctly right what we do today is this we implement this essentially on the back end, every time you connect and you say, hey, I want to upgrade my HTTP connection, we essentially, the proxy knows to tunnel and create a dedicated connection just for you. And that's it. It cannot use it for anything else. Each client will get a dedicated backend connection. So this client will get a, a TCP connection on the back end. This client will get a TCP connection on the back end. It's a dedicated connection for each one. Obviously, I mean, if we look at Slack architecture, they're using WebSockets for all this, all kind of stuff, for messaging, for presence information, for, you know, it says, hey, Joe Blow is, is typing, right? Or 
or, or is recording all these kind of messages all through WebSocket. So there's a lot of WebSocket connections. So imagine whether these are actual end user client or bots even, right? So the amount of connections, you don't want this one to one. You want to share as much as possible. That's when 8441 comes in with the idea of extended connect, which says, okay, I'm going as a client, hey, I want a backend WebSocket connection. So you would establish it normally, but the proxy is smart enough to know that you're about to upgrade your HTTP connection to a WebSocket connection. It listens for that queue. And then on the back end, and instead of opening a brand new TCP connection, it opens an HTTP2 connection, right? And as a result, HTTP2 uses streams. And then the beauty of this is like, let's dedicate a stream for that connection. And let's, the, another WebSocket connection comes in, let's use the same TCP connection on the back end, but just de dedicate another stream. And I talked about HTTP2, guys, if you want to learn more about it, definitely watch the HTTP2 video if you want to understand this. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Whatever I'm, I'm, whatever I'm saying, it's, it's Greek to you, probably, if you don't understand HTTP2. HTTP2 is the idea of streams, beautiful design. That definitely scales. Now I have one beautiful TCP connection with many streams. This is configurable, by the way. I think the maximum is 200 and cause co go up uh, uh, until, and you can, you can configure it to be any number you want. Obviously, it's not, it's not cheap. <laughs> there is cost associated with that, which is the idea of having these streams. I mean, we have assemblage that needs to happen at the application la layer, layer seven, to assemble these streams into into logical streams these are packets at the end of the day right to to the tcp stack these are just tcp segments right they're just goes on and then the application has to go oh this segment is stream one this segment is stream two this segment is stream three. Oh, these five segments is actually belong to stream one and you just like assemble that stuff that stuff needs power it needs memory it needs cpu so the more streams you have the the more you need to bump up the um the cpu and memory for that and then the people smart people are making this better and better and more efficient so let's see the state of the art today with regard to implementation of opsocket over http support this is nginx nginx this issue was open that's the only issue i found with regard to this topic and opened 10 months ago it says hey someone says Hey, support a WebSocket over HTTP2 engine X, which is the proxy, which we talked about. The proxy has to understand how to do this, right? Which is the extended method. But apparently, that's what they say. It's like, hey, will Nginx support WebSocket over HTTP2? And this is the response. Let's read it. Response from Maxim Dunin. It says, first of all, all basic things to understand. Nginx does not talk WebSocket protocol itself. Most proxies don't. Right, they just basically proxy stuff and as a tunnel on layer four. And RFC 8841 defines a completely different way to establish WebSocket connection using connect method. Right? Because Nginx, I think also a share proxy, looks for this upgrade header HTTP request. And it finds it, then indicates that you're you're essentially wanting to tunnel and it will tunnel. So they 8441 is proposing a new protocol, not necessarily new, something that the uh, engineer is doing differently, right? And obviously, there's resistance to implement this kind of thing. Support for WebSockets HTTP2 basically means that Nginx will have to translate these connect uh, request to HTTP 1.1 upgrade request somehow when proxy. While this might work, this doesn't look like a good solution. Obviously, yeah, that makes sense, right? They don't, they don't want to hack things together and say, oh, if it's connect, then translate to a upgrade request no they want to do it the right way they actually want to implement 8441 alternatively we may consider connect passing connect request as is to http2 backend for example using the grpc pass but this approach has problem in particular this doesn't look compatible with http11 backend so yeah they want a solution that is extensible so they're working on 
implementing it. But this is a statement, essentially. Overall, this is unlikely to happen unless this is a practical demand. They say they think there is no demand, which I disagree with it. Obviously, we people don't realize that they need this stuff because they don't understand how the stuff works. But once you understand how stuff works when it comes to WebSocket scaling, you definitely need this on the back end. You need to multiplex WebSocket connection on HTTP2 connections. You can't just uh, waste TCP connections like that. People, Nginx pe people must have understand this by now, unless I'm missing something. All right, so that's Nginx. Nginx says, hey, nobody's asking for it. I found this on HA proxy. Someone created an issue. And that's the same thing. Willy, which is the creator of uh, HA proxy, he's willing to do it, right? He's, uh, he's, he's interested in that. And uh, they are looking into it, but I don't think it's a priority either. So unless someone pushes this up, it's not a priority, right? Because this is from the issue. I'm going to leave these links for you to read out, guys. However, the, the other day I was looking on Envoy, and those guys actually implemented this thing, and they are bragging about it, and I'm, I'm so happy. I love Nginx for, uh, Envoy for this. Yeah, the configuration part sucks. I hate YAML, and I do not like the configuration section in Envoy at all. Watch my Envoy video. I I pulled my teeth uh, just trying to write one. It's so complicated with all these classes. Yeah, we understand the abstraction, blah, blah, blah. Open for extension, closed for modification, kind of a... We know this stuff. This is 1999 stuff. We know how to build this stuff, the extension. But it just makes end users miserable. That's my opinion, obviously. Uh, and I, I'm going to show you if you want in post editing an HA proxy config and Envoy config. And you made the decision which is, they do exactly the same thing. You make the decision which one is easier to read. <laughs> WebSocket over HTTP2. While HTTP2 support for WebSocket is off by default, Envoy does support tunneling WebSocket over HTTP2 streams for deployment that prefer a uniform HTTP2 mesh throwout. This enables, for example, this deployment. They do this. This is accomplished via extended method turned on by setting allow connect. So you have to turn it on. And I'm going to make another video for Slack. Uh, they just released a new blog. They moved all their WebSocket business to Envoy. They did not, unfortunately, mention that they did enable this because if they did, they will get a huge benefit. And they did not mention this at all. So I'm surprised because the benefits of, yeah, just enable HTTP2 on the back end, unless the back end is HTTP1. But yeah, the, the, the blog was, unfortunately, what it was lacking, right? So I was a little bit disappointed with the blog. It didn't have the technical details that I wanted from the blog. I'm going to talk about it in another video, but I wanted to make this video first because this is very critical. All right, so that's Envoy. So let's go to the browsers. The browsers, if your clients are browsers, Chromium supports this with a flag. Chrome supports extended connect with a flag because guess what? The client has to understand it. The proxy has to understand it. And guess what? The backend, I guess the backend could, should understand it because it's technically it's still a WebSocket connection, if you think about it. So it has to be WebSocket on the back end, and it has to be HTTP2. So it's not easy to implement, but the, all of these three parties must understand and this. That's why people didn't implement this yet. Firefox has already implemented this. This is closed and uh, closed two years ago. So already there. So guys, this is what I wanted to discuss, the extended connect method. What do you guys think? Um, let me know in the comment section below. This is good stuff. This is definitely a game changer, I think. All right. We need to implement it so we can understand uh, the power of this thing. Obviously, HTTP3 will make this slightly better because of the head of line blocking problem at the TCP stack uh, when it comes to HTTP2. So I think HTTP3 will become a little bit better with this. But again, there is a, a new another protocol that's called Mask. It's in draft. It's approved. Multiplex application substrat over quick encryption. So that, I think that will just replace the entire thing. That will replace the extended connect 
maybe that's why people uh, is waiting for this. This is essentially the quick version of HTV2. It's like, okay, let's just do everything on a quick. And there is another version, I think, of HTV3. Let's just uh, uh, do the whole thing on UDP. It's just much faster, obviously. And there's no delay when it comes to stream ordering. How you can just have every stream dedicated to each itself. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.